What's up guys, and we're back with season three of Uno X Pro Cycling. Been a little break between the seasons, as always it seems, but I hope you're as pumped for season three as I am. Look at our squad. We now have officially at our disposal. Alexander Kristoff is here, Skel Moser is here. All of our new signings are here. And I'm looking forward to a great season, hopefully our last as a non World Tour team. And so I have gone through basically the entire calendar, the entire planner as well, and tried to make sense of what's going on and where we need our riders to be, which races I want to attend throughout the season as well. Uh, that's taken a long time off camera, obviously. You can see what I have to start with in the early months of the season. Pretty busy early start to our season. We're heading to San Juan, Mallorca, France, the Saudi Tour as well. So that little block of racing I think will be in today's episode. We won't play all those races on camera, of course, but we have plenty of races coming up. I've only planned the start of the season. Um, yeah, it would be a bit much to do the entire season in one. However, great news off the bat is that we are heading to the Giro d'Italia. We've been accepted this year after being blown out last year, despite us being the best Conti Pro outfit, which should officially give us access to all the World Tour races. As you can see right here, this is the case again. Uno X has priority on invitations for all races on the World Tour calendar. So at least this year, we are heading to all three Grand Tours. I have also been rejected by a couple of races already. And again, it seems Italy just don't like us. Every one of these races, unless I'm mistaken, takes place in Italy. Honestly, what have I done to the Italians? You'll notice here I've already organised as well a pre-season training camp, ironically, in Italy. And so you'll see on screen I have given some objectives, just early season objectives to about half of our riders, some of the important riders uh, in some races that I think could suit them. So uh, you can see that on screen right here, just so you can refer back to this if you like to see which races hopefully our riders will be peaking for early on this year. I should also mention as well, obviously a lot has changed in the two years we've had so far in our career. Lots of new jerseys, lots of new sponsors, lots of transfers. If there's anything you guys want to know, any specific riders or teams you're interested in, just let me know in the comments below. I'll hopefully give you some information as to what has happened or what you're looking for. Some not so great early season news though is that Morton Hugard has actually broken his arm already. So again, I've seen this glitch before but Apparently Tobias now prefers a traditional approach to training, but when I go to his rider card, whatever you want to call it, it's modern still, so I'm not sure what to go with. I'm just going to leave it as modern as that's what it says here. Genuinely, we are hated by Italy. We haven't even been given a wild card for Strada this year. I swear we got one last year. That's a race we could do really well in, and Euskatel Uskedi with Mikhail Landa as the leader has been given a wild card over us. I am absolutely baffled. Good to see our guys increasing their fitness at the training camp. I'm not sure if these are worth it. 10 days training camp cost like 80K of uh, virtual money. Nonetheless, do you guys do a training camp when you start a season? Is it worth it just to increase their fitness by two to four percent. So as I've alluded to, plenty of early season races for us to get our teeth stuck into. I think I'll play the Vuelta a San Juan, Grand Prix Marseillaise and the Saudi Tour. So we will see the debut of Alexander Kristoff in the team and a few other riders in this episode. But um, I want to try some different races. So I think that's what we'll go for. We kick our season three off in Argentina at the Vuelta a San Juan. Really dominated by the sprinters. We have a time trial stage. Stage five is the queen stage of this race but um I think we're probably aiming for victories in stages however I say that we are seeing the debut of Matthias Skelmoser Jensen let me know if I'm saying that correctly guys but I'm really excited to have Skelmoser in the team so well-rounded he can sprint time trial climb he can do it all really well and still just 22 years old he's our GC leader of course we have Captain Price in the CT and Chris Halvorsen in the sprints. Away we go then for season three, guys. You can see a lot of Argentinian teams are here. I've also noticed UAE Team Emirates are the other big World Sword team here, or are the World Sword team here, because we're not one just yet. They have Alvaro Hodge, who is leading them in the sprint. He's the big favorite for today's stage. So 8K to go. I am considering trying to put Halvorsen on the wheel of Alvaro Hodge. We don't have the best lead out train here. Christian Kusa is our lead out man. 62 sprint on the day. 
maybe we should switch to Hodge's wheel. And so we have four kids to go. Hodge is a little further back for now. So I think we'll just continue 99 now with Captain Price on the front. We have Christian Coulson ready to go. Not in a roll he is accustomed to at all by any stretch. But 1.8, I think, is when we launched with him. And Hal Borson into the final kilometer going for the line. Where is Hodge? Surely he's coming late or he's not because Chris Hal Borson wins stage one of the Vuelta a San Juan. We get our season off to the perfect start. These are the stages Hal Borson needs to be winning. I noticed that Hodge is 79 sprint, Hal Borson just 74. That's a massive gap, but um, yeah, didn't matter today. And stage two, pancake flat. Let's go for two out of two. What am I seeing? Guys, look at this. 1K to go. This is a KOM. We're at 0.3% gradient, 0.1 back to minus percent gradients. And that is the KOM here in San Juan. And so, of course, we have caught the breakaway in time again. There are 5K to go. Captain Price doing the early positioning today. He can now pull over either Anderson on a slightly better day. So we do have, I think, a slightly better lead out man. Didn't matter yesterday, uh, but hopefully uh, he can really have an impact today. And it looks like Alvaro Hodge has decided to take the wheel of Chris Halvors, and that is going to be uh, an interesting move because I don't think we can really beat him with him right there. But now, here goes Idar Anderson, Halvorsen waiting in the wing, sprinting into that final kilometer. There goes Alvaro Hodge though, and I don't think we can respond to his sprint speed, and he is just about going to edge out Chris Halvorsen here. It was inevitable. Ah uh, man, that was a close finish. Not quite those two out of two. Let's try and make up for that in the next one because Hodge is breathing down our neck in the GC. However, it's time trial day today back in Argentina for the Vuelta a San Juan. Mikel Björk, Ivo Oliveira. It's fair to say UE have some real powerhouses in the CC, but we have a certain Captain Price. Also Skelmoza with a chance. So Captain Price is our first rider underway and we are going to be second at that first split, but we are keeping something in reserve. And that was with this little climb in mind. We need to keep some reds for afterwards as well, but we are flying right now. 3k to go. So just 1k to go for Captain Price. Can we beat Finn Fisher Black across the line up to 99? And we do by 15 seconds. Will it be enough? And next to finish for us is our GC leader, Matthias Skelmos Jensen. Could he upset his own teammate here? He is going to six seconds clear of Captain Price. My oh my. But this is one of, if not the danger man, Mikkel Bjerg. Let's see if he can defeat us. And he can. Mikkel Bjerg takes the win. Oh man, I thought we had that in the bag. But second and third, we'll have to settle for. It's the fellow... Dane beating our two Danes on the podium, an all Danish podium here in Argentina. Nonetheless, though, we have to be happy. Skelmosa should be able to dominate Mikkel Bjerg and most of these other guys in the mountain upcoming on, I think, stage five. So um, we're in a great position in the GC. Back to the sprints today in the build-up to the GC battle, which is bubbling away after that time trial. But could we drop Alvaro Hodge on uh, the KOM right here. Could be an option. So I decided probably not worth it. And to be honest, if Hodge is dropping, I imagine Hal Vorton is dropping on that KOM. It's not steep enough anyway. So we now have 4K to go and it is another mass sprint. Let's put everyone up to 99 if we can use the gels. Maybe a little late today and either Anderson, oh, what is going on here? What on earth is going on? Because Anderson has been blocked. Hal Vorton, go to Coulson's wheel. Just switch to Christian Coulson. He is going to lead you out today. Anderson and get off his wheel and sprint into the final kilometer. Can it be a miraculous win in adversity with us getting blocked? And I think it's going to be Chris Halvorsen just defeats Alvaro Hodge. What a battle this is turning into and what a win that was today. Oh, I really enjoyed that on the fly, trying to switch up after we got blocked with Ida Anderson and Christian Coulson has been the man to deliver Halvorsen in the best position so far this race. So we have swung over the other side of the world. We're now in Mallorca. I know I said I wouldn't play these races, but um, I did want to take a look. We have some new riders here. Johanna Stornamite is here on a very good day as well. We also have some really nice new jerseys in the world of cycling. For example, Kaya Rural, the team I cannot pronounce, really nice jersey there. Big fan of that. We have Michelin Premier Tech, who have taken over Arkea Samsic. That is their jersey on screen right here. And I think we also have Amiga Lotto with a beautiful, beautiful jersey. 
jersey, also being modelled by the 41-year-old Phil Gilbert. So Michael Morkov is the final rider remaining from today's break where we have pretty much caught him. Dylan Van Bala here in that new Ineos jersey. That's one I missed actually. Uh, looking pretty good. Quite uh, distinctive, I would say. Let's try and maybe power up this climb right now. Torsten Train doing a really good job. Maybe he can pull over right now for Tobias Haaland. Johannesson we have Johannes Dornemitte, new rider for the team, trying to work for Anton Scharmig today. Only 2k to go. Our guys are struggling a little bit. There goes Emmerich Mass. There goes Emmerich Mass on the right-hand side of the road. He can't really come past us, though. Only 1k to go. We're still here, up to 99. Scharmig hopefully has something left into the final kilometre. Let's go. Anton Scharmig trying to beat Roman Siegler, of all people. Wout van Aert as well in the European Champions jersey. But Anton Scharmig wins in Mallorca. That was a beautiful team victory. What a team victory that was. We are winning across two different continents, two different hemispheres, just two days apart. Next race up in Mallorca, and I had to show you this. Daniel Tekleheimanot is up the roads in the breakaway with us today. And you've got to say, the competition we are taking on here is absurd. We have two riders at the front, though. Stornomite and Johannesson are here with Adam H. Gino Maida in that new Bahrain jersey as well. We have Joao Maida, Hagisa is here, Adam Yates, Vingegaard, Tom de Mulan as well. It's pretty crazy. So a couple more stragglers have joined us, including Matteo Trenton. Let's try and cling on and hopefully sort this thing out in some kind of uphill sprint. And so Stornomite trying his best to position Tobias right to the front. He's doing that so, so well. 1.5 Ks go. No one is following. No one is following Tobias Harlan Johansson under the Flam Rouge. It's a twisty finish right here. And I think we have this one wrapped up. Tobias Harlan Johansson wins in Mallorca ahead of Elite opposition let's go and so i did manage to get two riders in the breakaway in mallorca today stornomite is joining torsten train up the roads and i must say it must be humbling to see damiano caruso the reigning giro champion just sent to work on the front for his new team ineos for bernal carapaz martinez Adam Yates as well. What a team. So, Torsten Train does lead over the major climb today, the Col de Puy Major, but we do have four riders literally just trailing us all from the breakaway still. A couple of attackers are still behind and still two minutes back to the main group. But no, the breakaway have been caught, so the final 4K will decide today's winner. No massive surprise right there. It's Anton Scharmig working for Tobias Harlan Johansson on the front. We have Dunbar here, Alessandro Covey, very dangerous rider on this type of terrain. Fabio Aru is still here. Can't really see any of the major, major favourites for the moment though. 2K to go. Let's try and really turn the screw right now. So here goes Anton Scharmig pushing it up to 95 briefly, but there is Roglic, there is Bernal, there is of Ran. There are the major favourites I was looking for under the Flam Rouge. We have the positioning, but do we have the kick to the line? Sharma gets out of the way, my friend, because Tobias is coming through. And can he hold on to Primoz Roglic? Absolutely no chance. This is Primoz's terrain, and he showed it as always today. Eddie Dunbar, pretty strong as well. Tobias will get a nice top five just off the podium, but Primoz Roglic unstoppable as expected. So we're back with the final Mallorca Classic today and it is the flatter one. We have had this final climb but it looks like we've got over with plenty of energy with Surin Wernschgold and suddenly we have a split behind Corbrelli is here and a few other sprinters are here as well. We need to sprint into this finale. I've suddenly realised we're not in the best position. Wernschgold trying to come around. Does he have the power to make up for that poor positioning? It looks like he does but so does Sonny Corbrelli and Corbrelli is just going to edge out and orange gold. Oh, we should have won that one, but Colbrelli takes it. And you have to say, what a super successful quads of races in Mallorca. We won the first two, then we were fourth, and then we were second and third. So all of our races in the top five, two victories, four podiums in total. That is a pretty good haul, I would say. But today we swing over to France for the Grand Prix Marseillaise. Really fun race. I always enjoy this one in game. David Godou is the favourite, but I can already see Magnus Court Nielsen is there as well. Here's our leader today, but we have a very strong team. Rasmus Tiller, Nicholas Larsen, Andreas Kron making his debut for the team as well. Really looking forward to that one. Mara Schmid is another favourite for his new team, Quick Step. Let's get it. 
Couple more new jerseys on show. Ben Swift in the Yoda Kometa jersey. Fun to see him on that team. I can see the very nice Bardiani jersey modelled by Filippo Zana. And there's something wrong with the Israel jersey, so I'll fix that after this stage. But Nicholas Larson is going to join the breakaway for us today. And Andy Cron and Rasmus Tiller in particular look to be our two leaders because Magnus Court. He's not at it today. Also, Total Energies with a very nice big change in their jersey. I really like it though. So we currently have a weird kind of lack of rhythm in the main group. So I'm going to try and attack. Early attack, 73k to go. Mogensen is going to try and bridge it to the front. Looks like Mary Van Savenen, Jonathan Restrepo and plenty of other capable riders are along for the ride as well. So the two groups at the front have now come together. Cool to see Guillaume Mottan working for Group Armour FDJ, his new team by the way, but um, I'm not sure if this gap is going to hold. We are working very hard with Nicholas Larson. So this has been a pretty exciting race so far. Lighted up even more now by David Godu trying to attack and join the nine riders left at the front. But that is going to mean surely that we see plenty of riders working behind. And so now 16k to go. We have been caught all courts bar Mary Van Savenen who has gone solo, I think. I may try and bridge to him right here with Andy Cron. Let's go. Andy Cron on his debut for the team with a massive, massive attack. Rasmus Tiller is still behind. Shall I go with him as well? Why not? Let's go. Rasmus Tiller trying to join the front of this race. Look at us attacking this race with Tiller and Cron. So can we hold this gap now? That is the big question. Magnus caught waiting in the wings behind in case we don't. But Honoré, Groschartner, Godou, Van Savenen up front with Cron and Tiller. Okay, so now we've been caught. Now we're playing the games. Andy Cron is going to try a very ambitious attack into the descent. I can't really see this working, but we're forcing other teams now into work. Right, now, do I go for Tiller or do I go for Magnus Court? I think I'm going to go for Rasmus Tiller today because Magnus Court isn't at the races. Cron is done. Let's focus on Tiller in a sprint. There are 23 riders left. So here we go, approaching Marseille. There's 2.5k to go. Magnus Court Nielsen now up sits up to 88. Let's sprint into Marseille. There goes Rasmus Tiller trying to go early, trying to hold a good position. Rasmus Tiller going for the Grand Prix Marseille. Are we going to hold on? And you know what? I think we are just about going to. It's so close with Alexi Reynard of Total, but we just about hold on. What a victory that was. Again, a wonderful race. We tried with Krom, we tried with Teller, we tried early attacks, and in the end, we win it in a mass sprint. So we cannot complain. That was just perfectly played by the team. And now this is the stage we have been waiting for in Argentina. We do have the likes of Diego Camargo, Finn Fisher Black, Mikkel Björk is one of the favourites here. I mean, taking a look further down the favourites list, we do have some riders who could cause an upset, but Matthias Scalmosa has to secure victory here today. And so Skelmosa does start the day nine seconds back and he is on a minus two day. This might not be as easy as we hoped, but look at the size of Mikkel Bjerg. He's a massive, powerful time trial specialist. I know this climb isn't too steep, but even on this minus two day, I really hope he can take the leader's jersey. And so our guys definitely need to make this climb difficult from the off, but look at the guys we have on the front. They have very poor mountain ratings. We just don't have the riders here to work for Skelmosa in the mountains. So this could be challenging, you know. But now the climb starts to get a little more difficult and that is made more difficult by Ida Anderson coming to the front. You can see here the final kind of 6K of the climb is the most challenging. Mikkel Björk is not moving from our wheel for the moment. And look how much this has been strung out right now by Ida Anderson. I think we could see some splits towards the front of this race pretty shortly indeed. But Mikkel Björk still has not moved but anyway this is where we surely have to try there we go Ida Anderson is done Skelmosa puts in his dig for victory Aldemar Reyes follows for the moment let's put this maybe to 85 still 3k to go and they are coming back you know so I think we'll go again I think we'll go again Diego Camargo is in our wheel we just need to drop Mikel Björk here but he is still holding on is that him done is that him done I know Diego Camargo is attacking for victory He's closer to us in GC than I thought, you know. Have we given victory to Diego Camargo here at the Vuelta a San Juan? I'm worried we might have. We need to close this gap because he's only 20 seconds down on us in the GC. And have we lost this race? Oh, my word. 
Diego Camargo crosses the line victorious. Skelmosa is not even going to drop Mikel Björk. It's a disastrous stage today. I was surely just too eager to attack, too eager to make my mark on this race. It's going to be close, you know, but with 13 seconds behind Diego Camargo, only two seconds behind Mikel Björk. Oh man, and I don't think we really have the chances to catch up. Anyway, guys, back to the sprints. This is our forte and hopefully we can make it a hat trick. For Chris and so here we go 6k to go we do still have a rider dangling out front from the early break where I'm pretty sure that won't be an issue I am going to use Skelmosa as a lead out man today he does have that 70 sprint rating so let's try and capitalize on that particularly now he's not really or he's done his GC work for the race whereas Hodge there he is using his own lead out man on this occasion, let's go up to 99 with Captain Price. It's an uphill finish today. I think UAE may be going a little early. Hodge is blocking us in. He's blocking us in. He's blocking his rivals in. Unbelievable unsportsmanlike conduct from Alvaro Hodge here today. Can Hal Wilson have anything left for this sprint? It's going to be difficult. Nathan Haas is coming. A couple of other guys are coming. It's an uphill drag to the line, but... We are going to win with Chris Halvorsen. And will we take bonus seconds with Skelmos Jensen? I think we do, you know. A hat trick of victories for Halvorsen in Argentina. And we do get bonus seconds. So Skelmos, at least, is now up to second place. And the final stage now in San Juan. Can we make it four for Chris Halvorsen? Here we go then. Ready to launch 4K to go. I'm not sure where Hodge is. I'm trying to find him. He seems to be out of position right now. So let's try and capitalise on that for sure. Put Christian Kulsa up to 95. We have Skelmosa as the lead out man yet. Again, that seemed to work pretty good last time. So 2K to go. Oh, and again, we're blocked in a little bit with Skelmosa this time. He can launch though. 1.5K to go. There is Hodge to our left hand side let's try and leave it very late if we can there goes Hal Vorsen to the line can he make it four in Argentina you bet he can what a ride he has had during his time in the southern hemisphere what a ride scale most of close to some bonus seconds again but he will not be winning the Vuelta San Juan oh guys we certainly tried we really did but uh, it's not going to be a GC victory for Skelmosa on debut I should have won that despite the minus day I think we played it far too aggressively nonetheless we did take plenty of stage victories down here in Argentina as well as the sprint jersey so Overall, I would say a pretty good race, despite just missing out on the top step of the overall podium. Wow, what a hectic start to this season. Just in February, we've only just made it into February, but it's been a crazy start. I know I said we would play the Saudi Tour. I think we'll do that in the next episode. I imagine this one has gone on a little while, so I'll try and split that up into the next episode. Again, if there are any specific races out of the ones we have currently scheduled that you'd really like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. But starting as we mean to go on, already we have seven victories this season, tied the most with Jumbo Visma. I don't think we can complain. And so guys, if you enjoyed, as always, smash that like button down below. Let me know you're enjoying season three. I cannot wait to fly further into this season. Hit subscribe as well if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one.